Welcome back to the live stage here at C2E2, Chicago, Illinois. My name's Adam Swiderski, I'm the editor-in-chief of Sci-Fi Wire, and I am joined by someone who, judging by the reaction, doesn't need much introduction, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh... Cooper Kai's own William Zabka. Hello, everybody! Thanks for coming, man. Thanks. Thanks. For you guys all should be belong in the dojo. It looks like this is what, <laughs> what the school to look like. Nice to see you, everybody. Yeah, I don't think I don't think fear exists in this crowd. Yeah, there's definitely no fear in this crowd. Yeah, yeah. So, season two, man, coming up. Season two, Cobra Kai comes out April 20. Happens. Some crease fans in the audience. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yes. I don't know what that says. That that's interesting. But yes. But uh, we'll see. Uh, so. I've seen some interviews with both you and Ralph where you'd mentioned that, you know, people had kicked ideas around about resurrecting this franchise or bringing these characters back in some way, and nothing ever quite stuck. So when you first heard this pitch, when the words characters from the Karate Kid first came out, what was your very, very initial reaction? Were you like, is this going to be another not quite thing that's going to fly? Uh, yeah, I mean, when the first, the, the writers of uh, the show, the guys that created Hot Tub Time Machine and Harold and Kumar asked me to go to lunch to talk about a project. So we go to lunch, and I'm thinking, what are they thinking, Harold and Kumar 5 or something? Then they tell me that they got the rights to the Karate Kid to make a continuation, and they wanted me to play Johnny Lawrence again, and I think I just about fell, fell apart, man. It was, like, it was like a girlfriend coming back saying, hey, remember me? I, I still love you. I want to try to make it work. <laughs> For real, it was like I was in shock half the time, and then they pitched the story, and then I'm like, well, I don't want to be like, you know, Am I gonna am I gonna lose again? Are you setting up to be the biggest? I'm not, I can't say bad words here. There's a lot of kids, but you know the biggest, <laughs> the, the, even the bigger jerk than he was in the movie. You know, and no, no, we're gonna you know he's gonna be an antihero. You're gonna love him. He's gonna be a little bit like bad Santa, but you're like the bad sensei. I said okay, and that's kind of where I thought that's, that's kind of cool. But there was no script. There was nothing. So I said okay. So what, what's the next step? And they said well you had to go to New York and try to get Ralph Macchio involved. And I said good luck with that. <laughs> uh, when you get to New York, make sure he eats a lot of broccolini because that's the uh, secret of his youth. Uh, interesting. So they went there and they got him. And Ralph uh, yeah. called me the next day and uh, said, uh, I answered the phone. If Ralph was here, but he's not because he's signing. But if Ralph was there, he'd say, he called me and I answered the phone and I said, I was expecting this call. Awesome. And then the show, the sh then the show uh, took off. Yeah. Steamrolled from there, yeah. Yes, sir. So how collaborative was the process of recreating the Johnny character. Did you feel some ownership of that and, and some input into where he would be and how he would react to this modern world? I felt really protective of Johnny Lawrence. And, uh, but the, you know, some of the dialogue, some of the scenes that came in were like bordering on rated R a little bit for my taste. And I'm like, I don't know, man, it's a family film and Johnny's kind of, but they did it right. <clears throat> they challenged me. So, I, you know, along the way, I challenged them on certain things and said, can we do this different, that different? But for the most part, you know, they took the legs out from under Johnny. You know, I read it, and uh, he lives in an apartment. <clears throat> He's got no friends. He drinks beer. I'm like, can he have a fish or a dog or something? <laughs> Somebody to talk to. You know, he's just a complete degenerate again, which is the smart way to go. I mean, you got to start at the bottom to rise up, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. So they really, uh, they, they knew what they were doing. They're huge fans of the Karate Kid franchise. And for years, I tried to imagine what could it be like. I did a spoof, the Sweep the Leg music video. If any of you guys ever see, saw that, check it out on YouTube. It's pretty fun. Um, but that was kind of a spoof. These guys had a handle on it as fans and as great writers to come in and write Johnny today, write Daniel today, and then birth this whole new universe of kids and characters. And uh, season two really gets into that. Other than obviously the physical challenge of retraining the karate and everything like that and the fight choreography, what was the greatest challenge, so non-physically, of re-inhabiting this character? Uh, it, it, it was just different. I mean, he's, you know, he's 30 years later. So it wasn't really a challenge. It was just uh, getting into his heart and seeing it through his eyes. I, I missed having my Cobra Kai's with me, the guys, you know, Tommy, Bobby, Dutch, Jimmy. And I felt a little lonely going out because the Cobra Kai were, you know, we're like a pack. We were, we were a gang, you know. And all of a sudden, they like separated Johnny and threw him in a, you know, gave him a Coors Light and, or Coors Banquet, <laughs> you know, cook, took his legs out. So when I was doing it, we were shooting in Atlanta, and I brought a uh, eight by 10 picture of the original Cobra Kai's, and that was on the wall in my apartment. That was the only one, except for the, my family on the refrigerator. So every day I'd walk by, it was kind of like, you know, honoring my boys and feeling like I'm taking you to work with me, and uh, you know. So I think that was the hardest thing, was kind of Johnny just being his own man and not going, you know, that we were all kind of one, you know, the Cobra Kai. But now we got a whole new bunch of Cobra Kai's, all these cool kids and great actors. 
um, endearing characters. Um, you know, it's dealing with modern day bullying, cyberbullying, things like that. Um, to get a chance to play Johnny as, you know, not the antagonist, but as a reluctant kind of anti-hero helping a kid. But he's really trying to help himself, you know. I mean, he doesn't step in and protect this kid because he's getting beat up. He steps in and helps this kid because they threw him against his car, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, leave the car alone, man, you know. <laughs> so, um, but he, he forms a great bond with this kid. In a way, Johnny becomes sort of a Miyagi type of character, which is uh, very, very cool. Yeah. So what was it like working with the kids? I imagine none of them were born when the original Karate Kid came out, right? Yeah, they so, weren't even born halfway through shooting the first season. Some yeah. of them just came out <laughs> along the way. So, but yeah. they, did they understand and recognize Karate Kid as a touchstone, given that that wasn't part of their growing up experience? Yeah, it wasn't part of their experience, but uh, they had, I know there was like movie night when we were doing rehearsals for Cobra Kai, and they would go into an apartment, and they'd all watch it, and the guy that plays Sholo, who plays Miguel, and Sam that plays, uh, uh, Mary that plays Sam, Daniel's uh, daughter, Ralph's daughter. And they all watched it, and then uh, Aisha, Nicole, who plays Aisha, and they watched it, and they were texting us going, man, Daniel really started all this, and then Sam was like, no, Johnny's a bad guy. So they watched yeah. it, and they got fully immersed in it, and um, they really picked their sides, and it was really like that on the set. You could feel the energy of them you know, teaming up against uh, each other. And so, yeah, it wasn't their movie, but uh, they, they realized what they're a part of, and now they're part of the legacy of it moving forward, and we're super proud of them and excited. The martial arts these kids do in, in the next season is amazing. I mean, they picked this stuff up so fast. None of them knew martial arts, and they just came out, and they're just looking great. Wow. Lots of fights, very cool. I mean, I think that's one of the things that really... Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's one of the things that really uh, resonated about the first season, though, is... is I, I can't remember which episode it was, but there's a season, or there's an episode in which Johnny basically recounts his relationship with Daniel in the original Karate Kid, and it shows scenes of him, you know, having those fights and getting hosed in the bathroom and everything. It was just really interesting to see it. The truth finally, right? Yeah, exactly. For the truth to finally come out and, yeah. and have this, this myth that's been built just torn yeah. down. Yeah, it's funny, the whole, like, uh, who's the real bully of the Karate Kid viral video that went around, it's really funny. Yeah. You know, um, but honestly, when I when I played Johnny Lick, I was, a, I was a commercial actor. I did, like, the thing I did before the Karate Kid was a milk commercial, a Pepsi commercial. Then I go in and I read for the Karate Kid, right? And, I, and it's a black belt who's a motorcycle leader. I didn't know karate. I never rode a motorcycle in my life. And he's, like, the heavy, you know, and, I'm, and he's a, a champion karate fighter. And I read it and I thought, well, this is great, but I don't know karate and, and, and I, this guy's kind of a bad guy. But then there was a couple pieces of it along the way that I connected to the ending when he hands him the trophy in the beginning when he says he's an ex-degenerate. So yeah. there was kind of a goodness in him, you know, that I saw him, that I brought to it. When did it, when did it first strike you back then that the Karate Kid was this, just such a cult cultural touchstone, had become something that was more than even just a hit movie that had become like a classic. It, it evolved. I mean, like in those days, it was in like only movie theaters. There was no VHS, you know? Kids, yes, there was a day with no, <laughs> they don't even know what VHS is. You have to explain are. what a VHS yeah, is right. to begin with, yeah. It's yeah. real. Yeah, I mean, it was like in theaters, and in those days, it, could, it was in the theaters for like six months, you know? I mean, movies could stay in the theater for a long time. It wasn't like a blockbuster today that comes out and makes, you know, X amount of dollars in two days. This was six months, and then, uh, then it went to VHS, and then DVD, and then cable came on, and then the internet, and all that just elongated the, the movie, and it just saturated, went through generations, you know? And the story is so special. It's really a story of a father and son relationship. It's a mentor. It's you're finding your Yoda, your, you know, your Miyagi, and your, uh, you know, all that. So it, it, it transcends martial arts, and it, um, it's, a, it's a universal theme, and that's why I think it's a worldwide beloved story and movie that continues to resonate today and why a movie like or a show like Cobra Kai could be born in the spirit of that to take it forward and carry the torch forward. There's something really familiar about the themes, obviously the characters, and uh, I think it's a lot of fun. So I watched it evolve. I don't think I ever knew what it would ever be. Nobody could have ever seen it coming. Yeah. Nobody could have seen it coming. Some actors who are indelibly associated with one particular role, especially, you know, from older eras, have a hard time with that. You know, it's like the fact that people will always associate you with Johnny Lawrence, no matter what else you do in your career. How did you navigate? I mean, you seem to have a pretty good sense of humor about that. You did the video or the music video, you know, you did the, the cameos on How I Met Your Mother. 
How was navigating that aspect of it for you, and how were you able to, I guess, maintain such a positive attitude about it? Well, you know, that's the perception from the outside. My, my dad always told me, find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. I love what I do, you know, and, I, and, I, and there was a time where I got out of acting altogether and got behind the camera and I directed and I wrote and produced. I don't get my worth or my value or my sense of myself by how people know me or how my, I'm defined as a role or this or that. My joy in my life is in my family and in my friends and way outside of all this stuff. So, you know, that's just kind of like all oh, projection on the wall. And I just, you know, I glance over there and see it. But, you know, I, I never consciously thought, oh, you know, I got to navigate that. In a way, it informed the rest of my career because a lot of my roles in the 80s, you know, it's like, hey, you want to play Chaz Osborne? And, the, you know, I played a couple bad guys. And, yeah. You know, and um, but I did a lot of their stuff, too. So, you know, Johnny's always going to be a shadow and he's going to be a part of me. I'm him. He's me in a lot of ways. Um, that's exciting, you know, really. Uh, there's a saying, you know, uh, you don't want to be typecast, but the, the rule in Hollywood is you're lucky to be cast. <laughs> you know, there's so many actors, you know, maybe 2% are working. You know, if you're one of the lucky ones to get cast, so, and everybody's sort of typecast, you know? You're yeah. gonna identify with everybody you've ever seen and, and then kind of accept them in that, that role. You know, it's a good club to be a part of no matter what you're playing. It's a play, you know? Yeah. It's a play, it's just a screenplay, you know? And it's got music and uh, visuals and yeah. Glasses. All right, let's talk. Next about question. Two. Let's talk about season Roll two. Roll the dice. No. Yeah. Tell us everything that happens in season. No, I'm just okay. Kidding. Season uh, two. But season two is around the corner, and Johnny's starting this season in a very different place than he did in the first one. In the first one, he, he had nothing, and now he's kind of built up this life. He's got kids who look up to him. How does that character, I mean, without speaking in specific terms, how can we expect to see Johnny continue to evolve in the second season? Well, you can see it in the tournament scene at the end when, uh, you know, the motivation speech before that he sends the kids into the tournament, he's walking around and he's telling them to have no mercy and, uh, you know, life shows no mercy, we have no mercy, and sets them out to go, you know, destroy these people. And, and halfway through the tournament, of course, his top student is fighting his son. And the heart of, of Johnny Lawrence right now is his son and the, and the disconnect he has with his own flesh. And more than anything, if he could, he would drop it all if he could just go take him camping somewhere. So yeah. to see his students beat up his son that way and, uh, and to use the no mercy tactics, so he's got to kind of rein them in and he's, uh, he's going through a transformation. It's really funny because, you know, Johnny was downloaded by Kreese, everything he knows and believes about karate and Cobra Kai. So a lot of ways, just parroting what he heard when he was a kid growing up. But he's evolving right now, so he's kind of making his mistakes and he's working himself out in front of his students and his students are all kind of an accident, you know, a product of that. So he sends them down wrong roads here and there and then he's trying to correct. So uh, he evolves a lot. He's kind of waking up a little bit. You're gonna see a lot more of him uh, coming to, to the modern age with the internet and smartphones maybe he gets a, a little Facebook bit of account this at some point maybe maybe yeah <laughs> but he's got crease breathing down his back because crease shows up at the end and um and yeah. that's a great relationship what happens there that's a real father-son dysfunctional relationship i was gonna that's say that's happening father-son except he tried to kill him the except last he time tried he to him. kill johnny yeah. yeah so um so it's fun it's a lot of fun but how was that having martin cove back on the set great. And diving it's great Mar back. marty is a great dear friend and just like ralph and these characters are like suits we put on, and as soon as they're on, it's the energy's there, and it was just great working with them. Yeah. Um, several times in this season, we see Danny and, jo and Daniel, I should say, and Johnny uh, almost, you know, bond, almost reach that point of friendship, and it always falls apart at the last second. Is that a dance we're going to continue to see as the show goes on? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Daniel and, and Johnny come from two totally different worldviews and two different perspectives. They're a core of them may be similar that's why there was an episode called different but same um but uh even if they were you know best friends they would have a lot of problems <laughs> yeah it's just so. it was that it was i think episode nine where they have that moment at the bar and they're bonding and i was like oh please yeah, yeah. <laughs> let this the peace in our time you know and we're yeah. never gonna get there yeah there's another little lot of tension between these two i mean yeah. you know daniel stole his girlfriend you know that said there was his heart Ali is running around somewhere out there with Johnny's heart, and Daniel's responsible for that. So I don't know how much. <laughs> I don't know how he's. So we'll see how that him goes. Off that hook, yeah. But season two, of Cobra Kai coming out next month. William Zabka, thank you so much for joining us. Hey guys, us. thank you so much. Where can people see you tomorrow? Right, you have a panel. Or yeah, something? tomorrow we have a panel. Ralph will be there. Um, Sony's uh, coming, and we're showing some clips from the sh uh, the show season two coming up. So that's tomorrow, I think 2.45 to 3.45. 
wherever that is. Yeah. So thank you guys Be all. Be sure you. to check that out. Yeah, William appreciate Sackett, it. thank you so much for joining us up next on this stage. No mercy. Sven Gulli, celebrating his 40th anniversary. Stick around for that.